Moments with the Master for this 10th day of May, 2021. I am the Egg Friar, Father Josh, uh, pastor at Celt uh, St. Martin's Celtic Catholic Church in Concord, North Carolina. I'm still coming to you from Kuwait. Uh, today, May 10th, is my wife's 50th birthday. So happy birthday, Marilyn. I wish more than anything that I could be there with you. And, um, but, and I know she probably, she hears me all the time, so she probably is not listening to this, but I wish her happy birthday anyway. And, um, and if you know her or friends with her, please do so. But, um, yeah, so the readings from the sixth Sunday of Easter are Acts chapter 10, verses 25 through 48a, uh, Psalm 98, 1 through 5, and verse 10. 1 John 4, 7 through 10, and John 15, 9 through 17. As always, we encourage you to read all of those. Um, today, actually, though, I'm going to talk about one of the passages from the Feast of the Ascension of Our Lord, which is coming up on May the 13th. And those readings are Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 11, Psalm 47, Ephesians 1, 17 through 23, and Mark 16, verses 15 through 20. So, I, and I'm not going to talk about all of them, but I am going to talk about the Acts passage and one thing in particular. So, let me share that with you. Uh, Luke, so Acts is like Luke book two, um, and in it he begins, In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up after he had given commandment through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his passion by many proofs, appearing to them during forty days and speaking of the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he charged them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but before many days you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And when he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. So we have this very familiar passage. If you've grown up or been in church any length of time, you know the story of the ascension. They're on top of the Mount of Olives. Um, Jesus is taken up. He says, I will, uh, the angels say that he will return in the same way that he left. Just a couple of little amusing things to me. Uh, first of all, their question to him, he tells them, you know, hey, you're going to go to Jerusalem, wait there, you're going to be baptized in the Spirit. And they're like, is this when you're going to restore the kingdom to Israel? So they're still thinking in that earthly sense, even now, even after Jesus' death and burial and resurrection, even after 40 days, they know for a fact he's the Messiah. Hey, are you going to now restore the kingdom to Israel? And of course, Jesus says, well, it's, he doesn't really answer their question, does he? He says, really, it's not, nobody knows the time. It's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has fixed, which, by the way, is not a no. And I do want to emphasize the fact that um, God's promises to Israel are still in effect. That God will still... Now, he expanded Israel. So Paul speaks about that we as Gentiles, when we um, become followers of Christ, when we are adopted into his family, we are grafted into the vine that is Israel. So we become part of Israel. Now, let me also be clear, this is not to say that what is going on in national Israel today is God's will per se. Um, just because God has promises that he is 
will fulfill to Israel does not mean that everything that Israel does nationally today is God's will or is okay or should not be um, challenged. Let's say it that way. And um, so I support a nation of Israel personally. I do not support everything that the nation of Israel has chosen to do um, over the years. So that's a that one's free. Um, but anyway, so he's like, this is really isn't important. It's not your place to know. You'll receive power. He says that. He talks about this. That's what I'm going to lean on here. And then he is taken up to heaven. And, and they just stand there. And I just have this image of these, these hundreds. And there would have been hundreds. Um, I think at one point, at somewhere it says there were 500 there. So they're standing there and they're just they're watching as Jesus goes up into the cloud. And there he goes, and it's like watching a balloon release, and I, know I can't see him anymore, and they're just standing there like, just standing there, and all of a sudden, they hear this voice, hey guys, and they look over, and there's all of a sudden these two, hey, where are these people come from? And they're like, why, why, are you, why are you staring here looking into heaven? He'll be back, go do what he told you to do. So they go back to Jerusalem. Now, what did he tell them to do? He says they're gonna receive power when the Holy Spirit comes and he says, you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Now, I have heard this passage preached a million bazillion times. And um, honestly, that those, those four things are sort of like, you can actually sort of break up the book of Acts with that passage. They are in Jerusalem and they share the gospel. Then they spread out to other Jews in the region of Judea. Um, and then later on, I think it's Philip goes to Samaria and people come to Christ there. And then later, um, and I think this is in uh, the, the Acts passage from the sixth Sunday of Easter, um, Peter goes to Cornelius and Cornelius is the first Gentile to receive the Holy Spirit and receive that promise, okay? So, so you have that, right? And I've heard this passage preached. Well, they're like ever broadening circles, right? So Jerusalem is your, your backyard, if you will. And Ju Judea is, say, your county, your, your state, whatever. And, and Samaria is a larger area and then the rest of the world, right? So it's larger circles. And that's great. And I don't have an issue with that. But as I was studying this, uh, this is a ways back, um, for a sermon, I started thinking and praying about, you know, what did, what did these places, why did Jesus use these words? What did these places mean to the people to whom he was speaking that day? So I just want to share with you a different way of looking at that and maybe a way that um, we uh, hones things down for us a little bit. So Jerusalem to those Jews was the center of their religious life. It was where the temple was located. It is where they went to celebrate the, um, the pr uh, prescribed pilgrimage feasts, uh, Passover, Yom Kippur, uh, Rosh Hashanah, and, and all those things. Um, and so they, it was the center of their religious life, okay? Judea was their ethnic identity, okay? So not everybody in Judea, not every Jew worshiped Yahweh. Uh, there were secular Jews, just like today. There are Jews who are not Jews, right? They're not Jewish religiously. Um, and so even in that day, even in Jesus' day, there were uh, politic Jews that did not really follow Yahweh in any meaningful way and were just Jewish by birth, right? So Judea. Samaria, those were the people that the Jews hated, hated above all else. I'm sure you've heard people talk about this, so I'm not going to like spend a lot of time on it, but they, they despised the Samaritans and the Samaritans despised them in return, um, which is why Jesus uses the, the, the Good Samaritan in Luke, I think it's 10, 
where Jesus tells that story because it's so shocking, this idea of a Samaritan being the one, not the, uh, not the priest, not the Levite, but a Samaritan is the one who displays the values of who God is. Um, and they hated him. And then, of course, the rest of the world being everybody else, all the Gentiles, right? And actually, that was God's original intent for Israel was, hey, I want you to be a light to the Gentiles. I want you to live my rules, my Torah, and, and in that way, as people see how living my commands, how much that blesses you, it will be a witness to everyone else. Okay, so... Um, Jerusalem, their religious identity. Judea, their national identity. Samaria, the people they hated. And all the ends of the earth, everyone else. So what does that mean for us? Well, I want you to think through this. Okay, so what is our Jerusalem? Well, our, re and our religious identity. Now, you're, you may be like, well, how am I going to be a witness to the church? Well, Remember, not everybody who goes to church is a follower of Jesus. Um, there are many, many. Just like in Jesus' day, there were many people who went to the temple, the, many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and um, the scribes. There were many who proclaimed to follow Yahweh, but as Jesus was very clear to point out, were not um, in, in another passage, they're thieves, John 10, they're thieves and robbers. Uh, they're wolves among the sheep. Um, and so the church, I don't know why I did quotes, the church, God's, the bride of Christ, the, the people of God are full of, well, Jesus tells a parable, actually, about the wheat and the weeds. Uh, the, the old King James word is the tear. Um, in the parable of the wheat and the weeds, it says that God, that, uh, that he plants his field, and his field is, of course, his kingdom. It's not the earth, because the wheat are his people. He plants his kingdom. It's his church, if you will. And then the enemy comes and plants weeds amongst the wheat. And, um, and so the, the, the people working with the owner say, what do we do? And he's like, just wait until they grow up, and then we'll separate them. Because you can't tell the difference. And he uses a particular word for the weed, the tear. It's a, called a darnel, and it looks exactly like a stalk of wheat until the fruit bears. Wheat turns gold, darnels turn black. And so it becomes very evident from their fruit who they are. And then he says they'll be separated, and um, they'll be cast out and burned and weeping and gnashing of teeth. That phrase Jesus only ever uses to describe people who think they are followers of Christ, who think they are going to heaven, and who truly are not, and find out in the end that they have been living a lie. And so we definitely have a, a witness to give inside the church. Uh, the Billy Graham Association, years and years and years and years and years ago, said, used to say that... Um, 50% of people in a standard church were not truly followers of Jesus. I would say that's probably much higher. Um, and it has become much more evident, I believe, in recent days. So we have a mission inside the walls of the church to live and proclaim the true gospel of Jesus and draw those who are inside living a fake Christianity into the kingdom of God. And then there's Judea, so they're national. So for me, my national identity is I am um, an American citizen, so I want to reach my people, Americans. Um, and, and if you want to narrow it down, uh, North Carolinians, and if you want to narrow it down even more, um, Cabarrus Countyans, um, or just the people in my neighborhood. Uh, one of the things, as I pl am going to be planting churches, and our church plants churches and stuff, is that I, I want to have our churches be small um, and neighborhood-based um, so that you reach the people right around you, your national identity. Um, I'm going to skip the next one because I want to end with that, but uh, the ends of the earth is just everybody else. We are called to go to all nations and preach the gospel. Uh, my oldest son, Jesse, 
um, is in seminary right now. He is going to get his degree and then go on the mission field with Overseas Mission Fellowship, which was started as the um, Inland China Mission by Adoniram Judson back in the 1800s. And Jesse wants to go to the Far East and share the gospel with people. He wants to learn their language. He wants to minister. And, um, and so he's going to the ends of the earth. Um, frequent, I'm kind of at the ends of the earth here. Um, but sometimes we can go to the ends of the earth just by crossing the street because often in our culture today, the ends of the earth come to us. Um, my dad and his church are involved in Kannapolis in a, an outreach where they meet with, uh, there's, a, there's a big uh, research park there and a lot of Chinese nationals come to work there, scientists and stuff like that. And so they do these um, monthly, I think, um, get togethers where they just sit and these people are able to practice their English with somebody from America and so they get to talk. And, um, and, and so they just go and have conversations and inevitably many of these conversations, especially when they get to talking about holidays and stuff, lead around to talking about faith in Jesus Christ, the ends of the earth. But Samaria. What does Samaria mean for us? Well, I want you to think about who you truly hate. Well, Josh, I don't hate anybody. Baloney. Um, everybody has that group of people that enrage them. I don't know who that is for you. I could probably name some people and some groups of people with me. But I just want you to think about who is it that just, that sickens you? Their, their lives, their words, their actions, whatever, just drive you up the wall. You see stuff about them on Facebook and you just want to type an angry post. You see things about them on television and it makes you just want to throw up in your mouth. Who are those people for you? God is calling you specifically and directly to go to them as well. Um, that's hard. That's probably the hardest part of that passage. I think it was easier for the Jews to go to the Gentiles and accept them than it was for them to go to the Samaritans. Um, those, early, those early Jews who were followers of Jesus. So what about you? Your Jerusalem is your local faith community. Um, your Judea is those, those people in your national identity who live around you. Um, your, the ends of the world are everybody else. But I especially want you to think today about who are the people you cannot stand and how is God calling you to share the gospel with them. God doesn't call us to the easy things. He calls us to the impossible things. So let's go do impossible things for Christ until he returns. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you.